I don't think I've committed this and pushed it to the, the repo yet, but I'll do that after the call. Um, but I kind of went through, cleaned up, and simplified a few things. Um, but mostly it's the same. Um, and then I started to try and plan out the analysis. And the first thing I did um, was I took kind of a historic average for the outflow rate. And I might like revisit this because um, Monstrosity sent me a like massive Google sheet with a bunch of outflows, but it's uh, uh, not by like month for the time step. So I, I kind of estimated. Um, but I, I might go back and revisit that. Um, but I got a placeholder value for that for like a starting point. Um, and then I picked a kind of starting point uh, just out of intuition for the target reserve uh, ratio of 0.2, which would be 20%, because um, that's what we had kind of talked about in some of the forum threads. Um, and a throttle of 0 0.008, which would be the max adjustment per time step. At time step. Uh, and that was about 10% per year. And that was, again, also based on some of the kind of conversations around like inflation and what people were kind of comfortable with. Um, so I figured it was a good starting point um, to like look at. Um, and then I picked a uh, variance of 25% per time step and pull being like going towards uh, uh, the target uh, three quarters of the time. Um, as kind of just a, a baseline to look at the productivity parameter. Um, and then when I did that, um, I looked for productivity values where the trend of market saturation um, ended up either below 0.1, so it kind of like didn't really take off, um, and also above 0 0.8. So I got like a range of values where there was interesting stuff happening and then narrowed that down um, to. Uh, like this, uh, this value here. And then from there, I started to look at the impact based on those, those assumptions of like modulating the throttle and target reserve ratio, which are the two sort of parameters that we're trying to, uh, trying to like decide what to propose as like a good starting point. Um, so I, I think I set this up correctly where, um, with the parameter sweep, uh, if you've got two, two sets, you kind of have to like map them together. Um, so the, uh, we've got three different values for the throttle and three different values for uh, the target reserve ratio. Um, and uh, then it runs Monte Carlos on, on each and we get like a data set um, that's split like this. Um, um, and then I, I don't know if there's probably a better way to like label this so that like it uh, corresponds to the actual thing you're looking at. That was one of the like data things that I was like, I, if I was more handy with this, that would be an obvious <laughs> thing to do. Um, but uh, uh, as I understand it, subset zero would uh, align with sort of the first set. So that would be uh, 0 0.002 for the throttle and 0 0.1 for the target reserve ratio. And so on and so forth. So, like, uh, I hate this refresh every time. <laughs> um, but then I, uh, then I kind of have uh, them compared, and I could already sort of see that um, with the higher reserve rate and the higher higher values, we start to see more success versus less kind of uh, this is cool. kind I, of success there. I don't know if we have. Uh, I haven't heard from him yet, but. Um, if we have thoughts from Danilo and on Sean, actually also on DataViz, because I think that this is enough to show that there's a really interesting phenomena happening, because in the top, you see it's pretty flat at the bottom, and then the sort of frequency or the number of trajectories that go to the top value, like, um, is going up as you go down, and yeah. there's, there's like... It feels like there's a lot here, and it seems like there could be ways to really pull that out, and I'm not exactly sure what those visualizations are, but, you know, some discussions about, okay, cool, we can kind of start to see the phenomena in here. Like, what are the other ways to um, uh, see this? Because, yeah, I mean, like, there's a set of scenarios that define these subsets. And, you know, well, one thing that comes to mind is, do these fall in a line or do they fall in a grid? Are there two dimensions varied in the subsets? Mm -hmm. Three, because I can also see how like number five looks more like number two and number and zero, 
then it looks like, say, six. And so, you know, in some sense, labeling the subsets by what they have in common and orienting them on a grid might even help uh, tease out the relations. Yep, I would, that's uh, from a data viz perspective. These charts are awesome. They're like clearly showing some results. And the, to make an improvement, like the first thing I would do is nothing fancy except exactly what Zargum said is like labeling the axes. <laughs> it it, it <laughs> would, would, <laughs> would make a big, because I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm seeing the patterns. But then at the same time, I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking at because I don't know what value and subset and, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm uh, forgetting what these axes are representing. Yeah, yeah was... I agree. Uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, what's the code that generates that visualization? Um, so this is uh, Plotly Express. Uh, I pulled this from the CAD CAD course in terms of like learning how to use it. So I'm not uh, super familiar with all of the other options. Um, I, I spent time this week kind of looking at Seaborn and as also the like plotting library that I think Sean you had mentioned, um, and I haven't like picked one to like try out. Um, this one seemed really easy in comparison, um, and it was in the other one for examples, so I started there. But I found it really frustrating because uh, I think it's a relatively heavy library. So as you go through the uh, thing, it like you have to kind of rerun them, um, and it's kind of annoying. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if the labeling is something I can do here or if it's something that I can do in like the pandas data frame. So like I was thinking maybe what I needed to do is like concatenate the, uh, the combination of the two parameters. Um, so like, uh, the 0 0.1 yeah, comma 0 0.2 and use that as like labels. Hmm? Ah, yeah, I would say that maybe this is the quickest hacky. Okay. Is that a hack or is that the way to do it? <laughs> I guess is the question. Uh, is that just like a quick, uh, quick fix or is that like normally would you leave the uh, data frame and, and uh, try and use the charting library to add labels? Uh, it depends on the scale, really. Uh, but one thing that can happen is that sometimes you are sweeping five parameters at once or ten different parameters. And uh, when that happens, you need to adopt a more structured approach for uh, querying things. Yeah, because I did want to be able to sweep um, not just those parameters, but like the, the next uh, kind of analysis step on here, I wanted to look at um, also sweeping the uh, um, the variant, the like pricing dynamic parameters and the productivity parameters. Um, this one actually, I don't think we're using. Um, I tried to remove stuff that was just like adding like little tiny things. See if that runs um, to keep it simpler. Um, but I wanted to to sweep through those uh, those other parameters as well. Um, but then figuring out how to like do the like matrix visualization, um, I started to get a little bit uh, overwhelmed with the possibility. And one thing there, Luke, do you repeat some parameters in the sweep uh, on model params? Um, yeah. The target reserve ratio? Oh, yeah, that's to get the multiple results. Uh... Yeah, because I, I wanted the permutations of like this with this and this with this, right? Um, but the the other thing is like because we don't have the labels, I'm assuming that the way that this is structured, and I like need to kind of look at the pandas data frame to to make sure I'm interpreting it right. Is that the first subset is this zero point two zero point one? The second subset is zero point uh, zero four zero point one. Um, so it so this would be subset one, subset two, subset three, subset four, subset five, subset six. Um, so if we went back and looked on here, these would be with reserve ratio 0 0.1. Uh, these would be a reserve ratio 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 um, for these last three.
Um, but because they're not labeled, I like, I just kind of inferring that from how I think that, uh, uh, think that CAD CAD's working. Um, okay. So I, th- my, oh no, I'm on. So I think we should get these axes labels going, and because that'll clear up multiple, that'll have multiple benefits. So let's just take a look at this cell here, the plot and um, x equals timestamp. So px dot scatter the simulation result. So should we take a look at that simulation result uh, data frame? Yeah, that's here. Oh yeah. Okay. So. Um, okay, and the different, mar- okay, yeah, so we have the subsets, yeah, so we have eight, we have nine subsets, right? Um, so, eight, I believe. Yeah, or, oh, nine, because we're zero indexed, yeah. Right. So we basically want to map our subsets, oh, so is that the index, seems like that's the index of our data frame kind of thing, or we're specifically using it as well, maybe uh, anyways, that doesn't matter, but uh, we kind of want to like reverse label those, right? So based on what subset we're in, we want to map that to um, the model parameters that we're running. I mean, is that kind of like the late, would that be a useful label for these visualization charts? Yeah, um, because the, the parameters that are being like changed in these subsets are... Um, Oh, it did not like this. Hold on. I'm searching here, but I do have a call this different that maps the parameters to the pandas data frame. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Oh, uh, I was just telling that I have a line of code here that does the mapping of the parameters to the, sim- to the results data frame. But I'm searching the code here. Oh, you've got a snippet. Cool. Um, but yeah, so I, I would imagine that subset zero um, would map to um, this pair 0.002 for throttle and target reserve ratio 0.1. Um, and then subset one would correspond to these two. Um, so if we could like label, so we can easily see that parameter choice, that would be helpful. Um, but yeah, I'm looking, I, I'm looking for, I have a similar snippet, I think that Danilo mentioned and there's one in actually in the CAD CAD education course. They show how to generate the same permutations that CAD CAD generates as it does this parameter sweep, and then we can use that table. So I'm kind of looking through the CAD CAD education course to see if I can remember where that was. Um, let me stop sharing my screen, and then I will share my screen as opposed to the window because I actually have that up as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, the CAD CAD EDU course um, has been a really good reference. Um, oh, it's so good. Yeah. So. So attribute parameters to each row. Is it this? Um. Mm-hmm. Hello. Oh, yeah, you start sniffing. <laughs> What's going on? Hey Luigi, this is the Luna like working session call. Um, we're trying oh. to figure out how to manipulate pandas data frames uh, so that like the um, the simulation subset thing corresponds to the different parameter choices that we used. Because um, otherwise, we're just looking at numbers and then trying to map it back to. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, this is the only like supply matrix. one. Okay. Yeah. Are you just showcasing, or are you actually? No, we're we're trying to work on so um, the the model is kind of here, but uh, in order to like use it, we want to do some like uh, experimental analysis and then visualize that so we can kind of uh, understand what's happening with the different parameter choices. And so this is sort of a data visualization problem right now. Um, So yeah, let's try that snippet. Seems so promising. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. See. Yeah. Too many VS Code windows up right now. <laughs> um, DF sign. This should be simulation results. I don't think that's what I wanted. Uh, actually, uh, I want to test that print x before you need that snippet. So, uh, put a df equals simulation result dot result index. So, dot what? Result index. Or drop the set index on the simulation result line above. Uh, print the dot columns. Now Uh, what was the ADU snippet again? Because I think there is a block there. there is, I think there are three blocks, exactly. There is what? Uh, open the ADU block again. The cell where you copy that hat snippet. Oh, the this one. Yeah. Thank you. 
from the rinse. This is stuff related to uh, you can drop the fine scale or take it that system events. Ah, yeah, that works too. But uh, this one would be Hans system events. And also you need to drop the uh, the two lines be, uh, below that. Um, this data frame must come from the ham system event. Sorry, Danilo, you're kind of cutting out for me, so I'm having a hard time, uh, hard time following. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, yeah, Luke, I have another snippet, uh, another one also from CAD CAD Education. It might be a more straightforward. So I posted in the TE Commons bridge. Uh, oh, I should have just posted in Luna, actually. That would make more sense. Um, that snippet there, yeah. And you're just going to then parameter 1 and parameter 2 will be the those two parameters that we're sweeping over. Uh, okay. But to this, and I was confused by this earlier because um, I would think that the number of simulations that would be ran would be the mul like the multiple of the lengths of these two lists. But it's only nine, so. Um, I mean, it's yeah. just the length of the list because it's pairing them, right? Uh, just a note: uh, on the product, you must put the unique list because this is going to generate a Cartesian product. So you must have zero dot one, zero dot two, and zero dot three on two. Okay, uh, I think I... Oh, wait. Oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead, Danilo. Um, or you can go ahead and run that and see what it, it puts out. But yeah, it's going to be the Cartesian product, which is not exactly... Yeah, that's not what we want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just want to zip. Oh, you can just zip it. So you can just go um, zip... Like Z ZIP... Uh, Parameter one, parameter two. Uh, actually, I think it's the opposite uh, that thing. Yeah, I think that parameter one and parameter two must be equals to the uh, to the zip of the param of the Cartesian product. Um, okay, so first of all, just wrap the zip in a list. So go list zip and then that stuff. And, and you'll get uh, what that's doing, first of all. Um, okay, so that kind of makes sense. That's what we want to see. I think so. So we should be able yeah. to make that our index. So if we go simulation result dot index equals that. Uh, dot index or set index? Uh, either way, I think. Oh, uh, what's this? Maybe because it's a tuple. Or just go right to the just go right to the bottom of this error. Let's see what the error is. Um, a length mismatch. 
Oh, 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 of course. Okay, so this is what uh, Danila was saying. Yeah. Um, we need to. Yeah, I just said that. Uh, ah, new sleep on Luna. Cool. And that Cartesian product should be, uh, I think you're going to use what's above there, the list iter tools dot product. Um, the parameter sweep. Because if you run this, you're going to get product is not defined. You got to do the iter tools dot product. And uh, I'm not sure if you have to cast it to a list or not. Oh, um, okay. So you're saying just do... Yeah. Okay. And then... Do I set this as the index, then? Well, let's see what that is. Um, I print this. This is just a tuple, right? Well, it's assigning two two values actually. Um, but you can print it as a tuple. I feel like this isn't quite the right exact answer because we're assigning we're creating two values here. But let's just do that and um. Oh uh, yeah. So. Danilo, it's not quite, <laughs> it's because uh, we should have a list of tuples, but we have a tuple of lists. Uh, I mean, yeah, because let's say uh, parameter one is going to have, let's say, it's sort of doing of like what was doing on the system of groups. But there is a thing that... Uh, uh, we are doing the Cartesian, Cartesian process, so the parameter 1 and parameter 2 definition uh, should be only unique values. So, for example, for parameter 2, it should be only 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3, no duplicates. Uh, the product you must import from inter tools, uh, either call inter tools dot product or from inter tools import product. I feel like if you do one more zip on this, um, if you if you wrap this in a zip, uh, so you just uh, zip that. We must change the parameter one and parameter two definition uh, above that. Yeah. Okay, that'll work. Yeah. Change this. Maybe just duplicate them because it's going to be a smaller. They're just going to have three values each. Just the unique values. Or you could yeah, just change those right. brackets. You could change those brackets to curly braces. They'll auto eliminate the duplicates by, by being a set. Brain. Still not following how this uh, matches to the index, though. Anyways, I think you zip this last thing. It's going to be what it's will give us. Uh, if you just put a zip uh, right there, yep. Try that. Uh, list uh, list zip. Okay. 
Os times. Estranho, é. Where is the Raven Dupe que é Zoom Dead? Oh. I mean, the, the duplicate, like you're pulling parameter one and then uh, parameter two, the first parameter two, the second, like there there are duplicates listed between parameter one and two, right? Uh, actually, I'm not saying here uh, parameter one is being a set or a tuple. I can't, I can't quite see if we have parentheses or curly. I think that's better. Okay, so these are all the parameter combinations. Uh, there's so we could just multiply each of these elements by the length of a single because each of each what we see here is representing a, a simulation, right? These are each of the simulations that are going to be ran. Yeah, and uh, so it it seems like this is not the right order, if I understand correctly. Because wouldn't simulation or subset one be this pair? And then subset two be zero point four, zero point one. In this, we're doing zero point two three times. Mm. It's like inverted. Um, so maybe I do. Uh, yeah, the trick would be to invert the order on the Cartesian product. Instead of being product parameter one and two, we would pass the product of two and one. Um, okay, so then, yeah, that should be fine. Cool. Okay. What were you saying, Sean? Well, and then to get a full index that matches our data frame, because uh, in Python, if you, like, take a list and multiply it by seven, then you get uh, that list seven times in a row. Like, it'll be seven times the length. So if you basically do a list comprehension and you multiply each of these elements by the, uh, is it N or M? I forget, but it's the length of a simulation. Uh, then I imagine we would have an index that matches our data frame. So you could go, uh, does this make sense, Danilo? Yeah, it does make sense. Uh, I thought I was still thinking why that snippet did it work. Yeah. So, um, Luke, uh, do you have, I think, I forget if it's N or an M, but it's like the number of steps in a simulation? Um. So we've got in the config. Uh, yeah, t uh, maybe. I guess it's t, t is a... the time steps. Yes. So if you can, uh, I mean, just use one twenty. Just hard, kind of hard code one twenty. So if you do this list comprehension of what we have there. So if you sign what we got list zip, assign that to um, like p for parameters. Uh, and then if you go uh, brackets and go uh, like something like A times 120 for A in P. Uh, now maybe we should name these better, but uh, <laughs> now um, then we want to, f <laughs> then we want to, that's going to give us a list of lists. So we want to flatten that list. Sorry, this is becoming so <laughs> complex. This is kind of a uh, joke yeah, casing. The... Me. I like, okay, uh, good. Yeah, I, I, this is part of the, the stuff that I think uh, in the working with all the CAD CAD stuff that's going to be difficult for me uh, is like learning all of these other tools and like manipulations that you can do with the like really vast library of Python stuff. 
I think it's important to recognize that the decision to build uh, CADCAD the way that we did with Python was because some of this stuff never goes away, but you get it for free if you have experience as a data scientist. And by for free, I don't mean you know the answer off the shelf, but more that like the fact that Danilo and Sean and myself and Marcus and many of the people who use these tools have other experience in Python data science. It just makes it so that you don't, not everyone has to learn this stuff, but everyone has to learn it at some point. They just, some people have already learned it. Mm -hmm. Is that, I mean, obviously there's also room to make it easier and I'm not saying we're, we are trying to do that, but I kind of, I'm like participating and kind of watching as we go through and like thinking about my own experiences and my like life as a scientist and the, the inevitable pain of just like, oh right, data munching. Cause like data munch, cause always. Yep. <laughs> it's a, it's a like widely known, just like ever. That that like eighty to ninety percent of data science is actually just data munging. <laughs> no. Yep, so now you gotta, so I'm gonna put uh, something also in Luna, so this is the last, hopefully the last uh, that will do it. So this is to flatten, because right now you have a list of, for each parameters, exploded into like 120 elements, but now we have to flatten that into one continuous uh, list. So just copy that verbatim and change, um, let's see, let's see what it says. Uh, change T to uh, P. Yep. Wait, do you want the comprehension or you want... P. Yeah, it's gonna, so either way, so you could, above this line, you could then say, like, P equals, and we can refactor this to have, yeah, exactly. Okay, what do we got here? Hmm, how is this, how do we have 10,000? Oh, probably because there's uh, not uh, just the number of steps, there's also the Monte Carlo steps. Oh, yeah. Which are 10 per. Um, didn't like that either. Hmm. Well, this is a good opportunity for us to know exactly how many, why is it 10,890? Um, you would think it would be 120 times 10 times, times the... Nine. Yeah, times the list. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's what it wanted, right? Yeah. Well, not quite. There's another 90 oh. elements, but I wonder what that 90 elements is from. Yeah, I think each each simulation has an initial step, so that adds 90. Okay. So if you change 120 to 121... Then... How come I still wait too many elements now? Uh, just maybe print the length of P? So we think it should be 9, right? Oh no, it's going to be way more than 9 because... Uh... Mm. 
maybe just comment that index assignment. One more above. Yeah. Okay. No, that's nine. Um. Yeah, we've made a mistake in our logic here. So for uh, so a times one twenty one for a and p. So there's nine parameter combinations in p, and for each one of them, we're going to have one hundred and twenty one of them. Unless that's doing something that uh, we didn't expect. So. Um, Uh, that's strange. I think it's our flat, maybe it's our flat list. Yeah, first of all, T, why is that 9? So let's just print out T. Ah, hey guys. Uh, yep. I just did a hack and I tested on the notebook and it's working. Um, so, on the Luna. Okay, so the, our flat list function yeah, flattened have... everything. And it flattened yeah, our tuples that we didn't... Go, go ahead, Danilo. Uh, just to see that in place of the cat cat did you sleep it that we were using before. Uh, okay. Just going to comment everything. Okay. And then you said instead of raw system minutes, I want my simulation result. Uh, I I think it's better than the enhanced events. Uh, ah, but I, I think there is no problem being the simulated result. Let's just see if it works. Um, didn't like that. Oh, there is, there is an underscore that disappeared. Uh, do you see the for loop? It put a... Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Um, what, what was that there? So it's saying configuration option has no... Attribute sim config? Uh, try to go to... Ah, okay. Uh, the underscore is DC. So put underscore between C and config. Uh, sign takes one positional argument instead of two. Um, Strange. Uh, it's missing two asterisks that, uh, before the config. Uh, ah, I think that this card has sort of fit in my code. Yeah, uh, the card that has used some of the Python things as format. Oh, uh, if you do, um, if you do the like little uh, code code wrapper box, it should leave it alone. If you want to repaste it? Triple back tip. Yeah. Back tip. Okay. Okay, I, I've sent it. Oh. Let's try this again. Okay, I like that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay. So now we've got a full index for all of the parameters. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Now, if you want to select a simulation that has a given parameter, you could use a pandas query. Well, can I do that directly in the plot? 
Or do I have to reshape the data frame? Ah. Yeah, you could use that of the plot. So face of how, for example, you could put the parameter name. Okay. Um, let's do um, throttle. See what happens. Uh, the only thing is that uh, we need to act on the DF instead of the simulation result. Try to reset the index of the app. Try using what is index? Has that the index of the app? Def. Put that dot is that index. Oh no, uh, has that index? I think we're coming up on the top of the hour. I'm not sure if we're going to figure this out. Um, I have a hard stop this time. So I'm happy to hack on this and uh, come up with some cool options for getting some cleaner axes. That'd be awesome. Um, and then I can look at it and learn. <laughs> um, I'll commit this uh, and send you a link to where it is in the repo. Perfect. Yeah, I, I would like to do that um, pretty soon, like in the next couple, like on the weekend while it's fresh. So I'll try to uh, have something that you can take a look at in the next few okay, days. Cool. Um. Okay, I found what happened. Um, if you guys want, I can share my screen quickly here. Sure. Yeah, let me stop sharing mine. And... So, are you guys seeing? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I've planned the repository and the only thing that I have updated is the sleep that I sent on the Luna channel. And in order to actually see the figures with, let's say, the mm. characters on the side, uh, you need to reset the index before. If you don't reset the index here, uh, it's going to give you an error. And, well, actually, we could even try another parameter here. Uh, let's see it quickly. So we are just waiting the productivity here, here, for example. Let's see what happens if we put here uh, productivity. So yeah, we have we have thing here. Anyway. Um, just make sure that we have a thing the X and put the parameter here and well, things can go. I think that's it. <laughs> Excellent, Danilo. And can you push that one as well? So what's the org that we're doing? A branch or a separate folder perhaps uh, for different people? Um, 
Yeah, so I created the Luna Swarm repo in the, the one hive GitHub. Um, and right now there's just like one folder that has this in it. Um, but we can create multiple folders like it's fair game. <laughs> it would be great to have more stuff in there. Excellent. Yeah, Danilo, if you can push that, that would be awesome. Ah, okay, I'll push to a branch. Yeah, when I do the reset index here, though, I'm still, I don't get the same result. Let me show really quick, and then, then I've got to go. Um, but I just would love to have this working before I commit it. Um, so you were saying do uh, reset index here, and then have the facet row um, be my parameter. But... I think we just see your terminal, Luke. Oh no. Okay. Um, your screen. Um, oh, all my terminals and VS Code windows look the same. <laughs> <laughs> They're all honey colored. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. So, are you seeing it now? Yep. Okay, yeah, so still getting this length of argument y three length of previously processed arguments time step. Mm, yeah, I'm not sure about this one. Uh, uh, go to the above block. Go to which block? Try to... Do you see that the F equals PD data frame? Try to, try to put simu uh, simulation result instead of consistent events. Um, well, then try it again. There we go. Hooray! <laughs> awesome. Cool. Um, then, in that case, uh, I will push this and send you a link, Sean. Um, Excellent! Yeah. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Good work um, on that one. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Oh, I just had that thought. Uh, I think that Seaborn has an um, argument for facet power, but also for facet column. So we could even have that matrix. But anyway, we can do see the next session that. Cool. Um, I'm going to run too, but I uh, note for next session, I was talking to Sean, but I also talked to Andrew Clark from Block Science. So one thing we want to do in the next session is spend a, a chunk of working time on the data from one hive's conviction voting relative to uh, the existing conviction voting models. It's something we had talked about in the past, but just like hadn't gotten much attention. Um, I think especially, I don't know, I mean, Luke, I know you're running off, but if you ping Sam, he might also uh, want to join because we want to have some, probably some hack time on connecting the data source, presumably queries against the graph, to the model that exists, since there's another thing, um, honestly, like, we should do, since we have the materials. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Um, maybe what we should do is create, like, an agenda um, for next week, kind of ahead of time. Um, and then we can ping the relevant people. Um, so they Andrew, can that specific window to our calendar. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm going to punt to Jeff the agenda thing, but um, I know I already confirmed with Andrew Clark that he's going to join us next week. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Sorry, was there a specific question about agenda? Oh, I was just saying that, like, for, for most of these calls, we've been pretty ad hoc. But in this case, if we've got a specific thing planned ahead of time um, and we are trying to, like, get specific people that would be interested in that thing, um, maybe we can, like, prepare an agenda ahead of time and just share it in the Luna uh, thing and we can link people to that or, I don't know, some, something like that. Um, Absolutely. 
but just so we, we kind of know. Yep, sounds good. Cool. Go ahead, John. All right, I got to run, guys. Um, thanks so much. <laughs> this was awesome. I uh, appreciate the uh, time. Yeah, this was fun. <laughs> thanks, Luke. Cool. Loving to see it come together. <laughs> Um, yeah, Jeff, I, I, yeah. I was just going to say uh, that 